I grew up in a place called Whitehorse Lake, New Mexico, which is maybe about 15 miles east of Chaco Canyon, the Chaco Canyon National Park, um, by my grandparents when my mother was in nursing school. Um, at the time, my grandfather and my grandparents didn't have running water. We live in a traditional style home, which is called the Hogan. Um, the sustenance of life was sheep, um, growing corn, um, living what I like to call now a simple life. Growing up in a small town, which is way different than like growing up in LA where it's accepted to be whoever you are. Same with San Francisco, it's accepting to be different. And growing up differently, like growing up in a kind of conservative country town, you learn to be more conservative. We didn't have access to the media, the television, we're like the last, and plus we living out in the country, we had no satellites. We didn't have electricity, so we didn't have a radio. Uh, we did have a truck and things. So growing up, uh, when I was young, I just was as I am. I had heard a story from my mother's eldest sister, who ended up playing the role of grandmother, if you will. And she had told me a story that I remember, that I recall, that, that long ago in the Navajo world, um, within the Navajo people, there was a separation of the sexes, and that there was an argument between man and, man and woman. And then at that time, the men went to one side of the river and the women went to what, the other side of the river. And it was the nugle, it was the less, it was the more effeminate, less masculine men that brought the sexes together. And that because of the nugle, that our people survived. If it wasn't for the necklace, we wouldn't be the people that we are today. Growing up, I was raised by my grandparents. My mom and attended school, my dad and everything, but the grandparents were always there, so I ended up being raised. I knew something was different when I was young. Never knew about gay bars, gay things like that, where they live way out in the country, where Kiowas and, you know, were poor people at that time, and still are, pretty much. And I perform both roles as male and female. Um, I help in ceremonies where I do more female roles. I help to cook, organize, and I also do more male roles where I'll haul wood, I'll chop wood, I'll bring in wood. But, but people see it as that special gift that we seem to have, and it's really well accepted. I never heard the term Two-Spirit while I was living in uh, Eastern Sierra's Reno and, and that area. I never heard of it. I always just considered myself to be a gay male. And so I grew up that way until I got older and then more towards when I moved to San Francisco, I started hearing that term more. There was no official term, but it was just that they were as they were. You never, it wasn't degrading. It wasn't humiliating. If you referred to them, you know, it, it was an, uh, referring to just as a person, your family, you know, like another person, but a two-spirited person, they were just holy, sacred people, you know, you never, that's how it was, you know. <laughs>